Morning everybody, my name's Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. Um, I am totally inspired by a painting that Julie Cutts did recently. Um, she did this absolutely beautiful long canvas that looked like a sunset over water and she did it with flip cups. And I've messaged her about it um, and just she's just inspired me so much. I'm gonna have a go at something really similar, layering up some cups, but instead of flip cups, I'm going to do some ribbon pours. So I'm gonna have some really beautiful sunset colors um, orange, yellow, gold, red, purple colours at the top and then near the bottom I've got the sea colours so some different shades of blue then going into some sort of turquoisey colours. Um, her painting just looks stunning so um, I just want to see, to see if I can have a go to, to achieve anything even remotely similar. So these are all the colours I'm using. Um, they just look gorgeous. I love mixing paint and then just looking at the colours together. Um, I'm really, really inspired by this. So I've got six um, of the sunset colours paints. So starting with some purples, some violet, red, orange, gold and yellow. And then I've got um, three blues and then um, a turquoise, iridescent turquoise, and then a pale blue and a white. Um, so let me show you what what I'm, what I'm using. So Montmartre Purple, Amsterdam Caput Morton Violet, Windsor & Newton Alizar in Crimson, De La Rowney Cadmium Orange, Montmartre Gold, um, Royal & Langnickel Cadmium Yellow, um, Amsterdam Thalo, oh no sorry, Amsterdam Prussian Blue Thalo, which is this really dark one, Montmartre Ultramarine Blue, um, Royal and Langnickel Cerulean Blue, Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Blue Green, Amsterdam, uh, what's this one called? Amsterdam Sky Blue Light, and then Montmartre White. Um, so all of these paints I've mixed with my own homemade PVA and water pouring medium and I've mixed that two parts PVA glue to one part water and then I've mixed all of the paints 50-50 pouring medium to paint. So let me try and show you the consistency. Um, I want it to be reasonably thick. This is reasonably thick because you can see it's just leaving a little trace. It's, it's just pouring off nicely. I have had to add some water to some of them because some of them ended up far too thick. Um, the iridescent, the gold and the iridescent bluish green, um, in fact that still, you can see that still does look quite thick. Um, I've had to add a bit more um, water to. The white and the purple I didn't add any water to because they were actually just, they were, they were much runnier. Um, so they're my colours. So let's get started. I'm going to start layering up my cups. So I've got, I'm, I'm just going to do the sun bit first. So I've got obviously got six colours here and I've got five cups. So this is going to be a bit tricky. I'm not actually sure yet how I'm going to do this. Um, the only thought I had was that I want the yellow at the bottom to be quite obvious. So I think I might start with the the cup which will be at the bottom of the sunset, So uh, which is going to be right next to the water. Um, I'd quite like a lot of yellow, um, so I think I think I'm just going to do quite a bit of the yellow and then a little bit of the gold, a hint of the orange maybe. Um, I'm just gonna just play around. I think just pour some paint in, see what happens. Um, I'm just going to layer the paints on top of each other. Um, they're nice and thick, so they should, yeah, they're just sitting on top of each other quite nicely. Right, I'm going to leave that, leave it like that at the moment so you can see the majority is the, the yellowy colour, a little bit of orange, a little bit of gold. I can always add more if I've got bits left over. So the next cup, um, let's think, let's start with the gold. 
So I'm going to use up the yellow in this cup. I don't think I'm going to have any yellow going up to the next one. Let's have a lot of or more orange as well. I'm now going to layer up the these four cups, so these are all my C colours, with the white. The white, I think I'm actually going to put little bits in all of these four cups, uh, just to break, break up the colours a little bit. This time I'm going to start with the darkest one. So this is the um, Thalo Blue, oh I can't remember the name of it, the Dark Blue Thalo by Amsterdam. So I'm just, I think I'm just going to add little hints of white throughout this. I've prepared my canvas. It's a canvas I'm actually reusing. I did a Dutch pour on here ages ago and didn't like it at all. I'd already varnished it, um, so I just wasn't happy with it. So um, I decided to reuse it. So I've just used some gesso. Let me show you. I've just used this. Um, which you can put on top of canvases to reprime them. Um, so it's it's slightly rough. It's not a very nice feeling. Um, I think the word they use is it's got a tooth to it. So that actually new um, paint will stick to it. Yeah, it provides tooth for good adhe adhesion. Um, so I'm hoping that 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 will act like a brand new canvas. So it's 80 centimetres by 30 centimetres, so nice and long. So my vision is, as I've laid these cups out here, I've got the really deep sunset colours at the top, coming down to the reds, the oranges, the yellows. And then there's going to be a stark line here, which is obviously the horizon. Um, and I'd like the horizon to be slightly further down the canvas. So there's going to be more sunset here than sea, which is why I've done more cups for... Um, the um, sunset and then you've got the dark blue going into the light blue and, and the sort of turquoisey colours. Um, I am really quite stuck on how to do this. Um, Julie did flip cups. Um, I find flip cups quite difficult to do, quite difficult to do the, the dragging part because I think my paint tends to be quite thick. So what I'm thinking of doing um, is ribbon pours. So I think I'm going to start here in the centre and just try very carefully and pour the paint on in horizontal lines. Horizontal this way, so yeah, vertical. Um, there's a few things I think that could go wrong. If I pour it over the edges of the canvas, I think I could run out of paint um, because I do not want to tilt this canvas like this. I will only be tilting it backwards and forwards because I want straight lines. So I think what I'm going to do is try and puddle it more in the centre and then I can run it off over the edge. So I'd much rather have a nice big thick layer of paint in the centre that I can work with and, um, and then tilt off over the edge. But my concern is if I have it too thick lots of thick puddles it's going to they're going to distort each other so I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to go for it I'm a bit nervous of this because uh, I've not done anything like this before but I think I'm just gonna have to go for it and just see what what feels what feels right so I'm gonna if I said I'm gonna start it here um, I'm just gonna have to go for it Right, it's quite a lot of paint there, so I'm actually just not going to finish all of that. I can always add in more afterwards. I'm loving the lines. The lines are exactly what I wanted. I'm 
actually, and then I'm just overlapping slightly. And again, a little bit of paint left, I'm gonna keep that. Actually, because I've got a lot of paint, I can go over the edges. I think I will. Yeah, there's, I think there's actually more paint in here than I need. Ah, oh, right, I've got to be careful. My lines aren't straight there. Right, I am quite happy so far. So let's now, let's just work our way up the canvas. Right, really, really pleased. Um, but what I'd like to do is try and work on a graduation more. Um, I feel that it's the, the blues have all blended really beautifully, but I feel that there's too much of a stark line here in between the purple and the red. So there's a little bit left of paint left in the cup. So I'm just going to pour just a little bit on just to try and um, blur that line a little bit more. Yeah, I'm much happier with that already. Right, I think the next thing I'm going to do is the tilting because I have got a lot of paint on here now, so this is great. Um, so I'm now just gonna tilt lots off over the edges and see what happens. In fact, I might even put some gloves on for this. I rarely wear gloves and I've always got dirty hands, but I just find Gloves, I just like to be able to feel the paint um, and with gloves you can't but it doesn't really matter with a, with a pour like this because I'm all I'm going to be doing now is just tilting. Um, in fact I'm going to go for a tiny bit more, I'm still thinking that this purple band is a bit too big. And just this, this readier cup, I'm just going to do a little tiny bit more. So this is the huge advantage of having too much paint. And I know when Julie does her pores, she uses a lot of paint and she tilts a lot off. But I think that really is the only way to get um, a, often a composition that you're happy with. Right, I've taken that all the way to the top. I really like that. That is blending in beautifully. 
Um, I will torch it. I can see quite a lot of air bubbles. I don't really want any cells, um, but I will torch for air bubbles. However, I do have some cells and some lacing. So I, it almost looks like there's a hint of silicon somewhere. So I do reuse my stir sticks and I often do reuse cups because I wash everything. So I wonder if there's been a, a trace of silicon somewhere. So lots and lots of air bubbles. So I'm gonna get these out now. Right, so I'll tilt it away from me first. As I said, there will be no side to side tilting. It's just going to be backwards and forwards until the canvas is covered, which won't be long. And that I've got a lot of paint off the canvas. So I'm just gonna tilt it back towards me. There was a lot of paint on here. This is so heavy. Right, I'm going to keep tilting because there's too much paint. Also, I need to try and get a horizontal horizon. I guess it's not horizontal at the moment. So, let's keep tilting. Right, I'm almost, almost finished. Um, I absolutely love it, except for the fact that I don't have a horizontal horizon, because obviously the horizon has to be totally straight because it's water. Um, I think I was expecting by just tilting, I was expecting it just to fall, flow naturally and form a straight line. But thinking about it, if there's a difference in consistency of these paints compared to these, they will slide a slightly different rate or the different volume of paint so I'm going to be brave and try and go in with another line horizontally if this doesn't work I will let it dry and then I will come back and um, draw, uh, paint something on it so I'm just going to try and get a very very thin bead of the dark paint Right, I'm done. I love it. Let me show you. This is such a long canvas, it's really quite tricky to show you. I'd quite like to show you how, I'm just holding my phone up really, really high, I'm just trying to show you how it would hang, so vertically, but it's it's just not really fitting into the camera. Um, lots I want to say. Um, first of all, this section here, I love. So it's not straight here, but that to me almost looks like it's slightly wavy, um, like the, the waves are about to crash on the beach, which is would have, would be further down. Um, really, really like that. Um, if you look in closely, the lines are just, there's just hundreds and hundreds of little lines. Um, and I'm really pleased with the way that they've all just blended and mixed together, really pleased. So if you go up into the blue section, something really interesting has happened. Um, you've got cells and lacing 
it could be that that's just an interaction of these paints. Um, I, I'm not sure. As I said, it could be that somewhere something had a little bit of silicon on it. Um, but I really like it. So it wasn't meant to, to be like that, but I, but I really like it because it just looks like bubbles. It looks it looks part of the sea. It just seems to, to give it some movement, I think. Um, the other thing I like, I just pulled this dark line over and can you see that there's some yellow poking through? So I tried to I tried to get rid of all that yellow, but what I'm fine what I think is if you stand back, it almost looks like a slight reflection. Um, or, so I, I'm, I would be tempted to actually put some yellow down here. I'm not going to because I think I'll mess it up. But to me, it just looks like a bit of a reflection um, of, the, of the sun onto the water. If I'm not happy with it, when it's dry, I will paint over that. But I, I actually quite like that. I've got the really lovely bright band of yellow, which I wanted. And then going up, it just blends beautifully orange, red, and then the violet and then the purple. If you look really closely at the purple, can you see the lovely lines of uh, the other colours in it? They're very, very wispy and very thin. Almost look like clouds, wispy clouds in the sky. Um, and you can see, I think you can get some sense of the shimmer there because of the gold. Yeah, you can really see it there. There's just this beautiful shimmer throughout that section. Um, and then again, more really beautiful cells. It might just be an interaction of the paints. As paints have different densities and they interact together, um, it creates cells so some paints sink, some paints um, come to the surface. Um, but there you go. The edges, love these edges. I love paint that just drags over the edge of a canvas. Um, and it's done this beautifully because it's such lovely thick paint. Right. Everybody keep your fingers crossed. I want it to dry just like this. Um, so I will be back once it's dry. So here's the dry result. I am so, so happy. I absolutely love it. Being very critical, there's a couple of things I'm not so not so keen about. For example, um, I really miss the purple at the top. The purple has gone so dark. Um, I don't think it looks purple anymore. Um, but I overall, I'm so happy with it. Um, it's very long high this canvas which is why I'm sitting right back here in my kitchen um, so let me go in for a close-up to show you some of the details um, the horizon it's not perfect but I'm leaving it um, so as you can see I've got that bit of yellow peeking through there which I guess isn't perfect but I think it does look like a bit of shimmer on the water um, and I really like the slightly sort of bubbly a bubbly effect um, there's quite a few cells which I just think like look, look like bubbles in the sea and the ripples um, and I just love the way the colours have just blended together and then at the bottom here you've got this band of really beautiful turquoisey colour which to me just looks like looks like the shore it almost looks like where, where the um, waves will, would hit the beach you get a, a slightly frothier sea and it, it just looks like that and then going up into the sunset, the blend of these colours is gorgeous. I've got a lot of the yellowy orange, which is what I wanted. Um, and then it goes into the gold. So in different lights, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this light. No, I don't think you can. You get, you get a lot of shimmer from it. And then just these random cells, which I love. A little bit of red. I guess ideally I could have put more red in. Um, and then look at these beautiful cells. They're, they're sort of out of nowhere. Um, but I love them, really like them. Um, and then going up into the purple. So as I said, the purple, it is just dried so dark. To me, it doesn't really look purple anymore. In the middle there, you can sort of see it, that violety colour. Um, so in, I wish that I just added a bit of white so that it would have looked too purple when it was wet. But when it's dry, it would have been the right colour. It's really difficult sometimes, I think, to judge colours because knowing that they will darken as they dry. Um, so there it is, really happy with it. Um, I'm going to do another one of these and I've decided to do another sunset but in sort of pinks and purples. So less realistic, maybe more abstract colours but I, I think equally um, it, it could work. So um, watch out for that, I'm going to do that one next. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Please leave any comments um, you have about the video um, and do subscribe to my channel. Great, have a lovely day everyone. Bye.